Hi, this is Alex from phpacademy.org with a video tutorial for the new Boston. In this video, we're going to be using jQuery.now to retrieve a current time so we can match it against um, an event or a time in the future and, and display to the user how many days until this particular event. So essentially what we're doing is we're allowing the user or in the back end of our script in ext.js we're allowing ourselves or someone else to set a textual representation of a time. We're then going to use jQuery now to return the current time and we're going to work out the amount of days between now and the event. So we're going a little bit over the top here with regards to what we're creating, but this will demonstrate jQuery now uh, and the use for this quite nicely. So the first thing I want to go ahead and do is create an area on my page that I'm actually going to display uh, the amount of days uh, remaining. So for example, this might say, uh, let's say five days remaining, if I could spell it right, or um, only five days until this event. I guess we could say that's what we want it to say, that this is what we want it to display on the page, only five days until this event. So we're replacing this with the amount of days. <clears throat> okay, so what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're not going to write anything inside of this div we're going to let ext.js handle absolutely everything so inside um, my index.php I've obviously included jQuery extremely important because we're using jQuery.now and ext.js which is the file that we're going to handle everything in and that's going to place the text inside of this div here so the first thing we want to go ahead and do is wait for the document to be ready so I'm going to say document.ready so this uh, here selector refers to the document itself and this refers to the fact that the it works well, an event handler it refers to when the document is ready um, and we can start to manipulate things and, and you know do things like that this is almost instant uh, instant but we uh, tend to do this in jQuery every time we write code okay so now what we're doing is we're creating a function inside of here and inside of the block I'm just going to pull that down so we can start writing our code. Now the first thing we want to go ahead and do is set a time for our event and this is going to be a string um, which we're going to supply for example 12th of August 2011 it's 8th of August 2011 today so that's about three days uh, to that event so we'll use this as an example I'm going to go ahead and create uh, a variable called event time and this is going to be equal to um, a string so let's just go ahead and say 12th of August 2011 now what I first of all want to do is wrap this in uh, the pass um, functionality of date now this isn't really anything to do with uh, jQuery it's to do with JavaScript um, but we obviously sometimes still need to use JavaScript jQuery doesn't include some functionality because J uh, JavaScript does it on its own well and you don't need a library for it so we're using date.pass and we're wrapping that like that. Uh, let's go ahead and just alert this event time out so we can see what we uh, are displayed with. Uh, let's press F5. Now you notice there's a number of um, sort of trailing zeros afterwards. Um, what we actually want is we want um, this to be um, without the milliseconds afterwards. The, the zeros, the trailing zeros that you see are the milliseconds. So what we want to go ahead and do is divide this by a thousand uh, and then we get a, a representation of this date in seconds rather than uh, with the milliseconds uh, at the end. So this is a lot more helpful because we don't really need to calculate milliseconds. Okay, so now we're going to go and write the uh, or apply the um, current time to a variable, um, the value in there. So I'm going to say current time is equal to, and let's just tab these over. It's a bit neater. Um, what are we going to say? So current time is equal to jQuery dot now, as we've seen. And again, we need to divide this by a thousand because if we were to go ahead and just alert current time on its own, and let's go ahead and refresh, you see that we've got these milliseconds as well afterwards, which change obviously quite rapidly. So we don't really want to be counting milliseconds. So let's go ahead and divide that by a thousand as well. And now we get a representation of the um, of the time here. The only problem is, 
is that we are not uh, flooring this data. Uh, ideally, we want to remove the um, the what's it called after the decimal point. The dec uh, we want to remove anything in the you know after the decimal point. Uh, basically, we want to round down. So we want to say math dot floor and wrap that in there. And we could do the same for the event time as well. Um, I don't know how it handles this, but we'll leave it for now because it will work fine without. Okay, so what I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to work out the amount of seconds between these two events. Now, because we're returning them both as seconds, this is quite straightforward. So the amount of seconds between the two events is simply the event time minus the current time. And then we have the difference in seconds between the two events. So let's go ahead and alert out seconds and let's refresh and you can see that this is the amount of seconds between the two events and obviously that will keep um, you know changing in value okay so now what we want to go ahead and do is um, calculate the days so to calculate the days we want to take the seconds and we want to divide it by 60 times 60 times 24 okay so let's go ahead and alert out days and we'll go ahead and refresh uh, and you can see that we've got three days here but we've got point and we've got a lot of decimal places afterwards so we can go ahead and use math.floor here as well uh, and this will just return a value of three so let's go ahead and wrap this in math.floor and once we've done that and we alert days out you can see that we've just got three so now we've successfully retrieved the amount of days and all that's really left to do is go ahead and place it inside this days div here so we'll go ahead and do that now. We're going to use a jQuery selector to select the days div with the ID of days. Remember, we use a hash to select the ID. And we want to go ahead and place some text in here. And that text is only x days until the event. And with x, we'll just go ahead and uh, concatenate on this days uh, variable that we've created here. So now when we refresh, we get only three days until the event. Now, obviously, let's go ahead and just, I'm just going to tidy this up because uh, that's just what I'm like. But we'll go ahead and uh, maybe change this to 20th of August. And when we refresh, you see you've got 11 days until the event. Let's go ahead and change this to 2015. Uh, and you'll see we've got uh, only 1,472 days until the event. So using jQuery.now and uh, I think the rest, uh, certainly these two lines here, this line here um, are both plain JavaScript. However, this line here obviously uses uh, jQuery.now. Um, I think we can go ahead and use a dollar sign here, actually. Let's just check. Yeah, we can. We can use a dollar sign here instead of jQuery. We don't need to use the jQuery notation. Um, also, this line obviously uses jQuery. But essentially, what we've done is use now to grab the current time, floored it, and then worked out the amount of days. So. Even if you know you didn't learn too much about the now functionality in jQuery, you've learned how to retrieve an amount of days uh, to an event. So that's about it. We've got only 1,472 days until the event that we specified. Quite easy piece of code and uh, also quite effective and useful if uh, you are required to use it at all.